Reptiles have been around for over 200 million years, and one of their most defining characteristics are their scales. But what are the purposes for those scales? In the past, most experts felt they aided in water retention to help with heat transfer, locomotion, and protection. But let's take a closer look. My name is Brian Barczak. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often brings up questions, and I'm in search of answers. Today, my question is, what is the purpose for scales and reptiles, and what happens if you take those scales away? You're watching today, Bites. Scales are a characterized integument, which is one of the most distinctive features in reptiles. Scales are a superficial dermal layer, the outermost dermal layer. In scaleless snakes, they are totally missing this layer, but they possess a keratin layer much thinner than that of a normal scaled snake. The body surface of a scaleless snake seems most like the flexible hinge region that exists between the scales of a normal animal. But the real question is, how does it affect the snake's ability to survive and live a healthy life? Snakes have several forms of locomotion, with the most common referred to as lateral undulation. This is where lateral bending is propagated along the body from head to tail. The muscles are active unilaterally in each bend, from the convex part of the bend forward to the straight or concave part of the bend. As the snake progresses, each point along its body follows along the path established by the head and neck, like the cars of a train following its engine as it moves along the track. Thus, sliding friction is a critical component of lateral undulation. But are the scales responsible for this locomotion? What happens when we take the scales away? Many scaleless snakes still have belly scutes, though the majority have an unusual slit down the middle, seemingly separating them into two sides. These snakes appear to move the same as a normally scaled snake. But in the case of the scaleless ball python, they're even void of their belly scales and are completely scaleless. In their case, it also appears that they use the same form of locomotion and doesn't seem to change their effectiveness in movement. It was the consensus that scales help retain water in a healthy reptile. But in 1972, Paul Light and Albert Bennett conducted a test to see if there was any difference in a snake without scales' ability to retain water. Rates of water loss were measured in two aberrant scaleless water snakes as well as six normal animals. The water loss of scaleless animals was equal to or less than that of the normal control animals. Thus, the reptilian scales and their associated features cannot be considered adaptations for the curtailment of the integumentary water loss. In the same study, Light and Bennett looked at the distribution of temperature and loss of heat between scaleless specimens and the control normal animals. Once again, there was no discernible difference. So what have we deemed so far that the lack of scales in snakes does not affect water loss, thermal regulation, or locomotion, but scales certainly have to be there for a reason. In this case, they are the protective armor for snakes, protecting them from harsh environments that they encounter in the wild. Snakes crawl over rocky and abrasive surfaces as well as feed on live prey, not to mention they have run-ins with fierce predators. This scaly armor aids in protecting them from injuries in the wild. Yet from 1942, when the first scaleless western garter snake was recorded to be captured, there have been dozens of snakes in several species that have been captured from the wild in various stages of life, from juvenile all the way to adult. The most interesting observation was that these specimens had no increased scarring than the scaled animals from the same region. This begs the question of how important are scales and what benefit do they have to reptiles? The more I research, the more I realize while scales are certainly helpful in wild snakes, scaleless snakes have thrived in captivity for nearly 75 years. The term deformity is often attached to scaleless snakes, but what determines a deformity? Deformity is a major difference in shape of a body part or organ compared to the average shape of that part. Can you tell the difference between these two snakes? Perhaps deformity is not the proper term to be used in the case of scaleless snakes. 
In reptiles, we call the lack of color or pattern a mutation. It would seem that lacking scales would fit more into this category, seeing as it doesn't appear to affect the ability to thrive and live a healthy life. Is there really a difference between an albino snake that is lacking its camouflage to protect itself from predators, or a scale of snake that is lacking its dermal layer of scales? Both have been caught as adults and both have been bred in captivity for decades. In the end, we have to all decide what our own preferences are, but the example of scaleless snakes seems to make for brilliant colored and patterned offspring which appear to live full lives in captivity. Whether you agree or disagree with this mutation, at least we helped answer some of the questions I set out to in this presentation. Go ahead and comment down below about how you feel about scaleless reptiles and make sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SnakeBitesTV and check back often. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.